Welcome back. Before you ask, oh yes, I know what I look like. My thermometer outside the bathroom window, which is in the shade, is currently reading 110. And I was out all day long in this with the landscape guy. So, yeah, I know what I look like. But, on the upside, I have a road trip for you because today is Project Sunday. See you in a minute. Well, our road trip today was to get a mat for the beautiful Kylie Seacrest schoolhouse and Audie, yes, and Audie, they know you were in that, and Audie painting. Um, very important he be included. And I took you along. Yes, all right, baby. Yeah, somebody's a little attention starved. Okay, let me start with the first clip. This is when I went into Michael's and took a look at what they had available for picture matting choices. So, let's take a peek at this. Well, these were some of our mat choices. And this one is nice, but if you look at it on the edge, you can see here, let's hold that up so you can see. Very thin. And I chose one. Oh, thank you. I chose this one, which, as you can see, is thicker. And we discussed that. I want to make sure that the art is held far away from the glass. And this is going to do it. This is a nice sort of, not quite white, more on the grayish side which is what we're looking for. So, uh, what's happening now is we're ordering the mat and uh, we've got our exterior dimensions, which is what's going to determine the cost, I would imagine, yes? And then um, I will let them know what our interior dimensions are and we will come back, get our mat, because this is not a do it while you wait. This is like two days, right? All right, so this is a week, so we will come back in one week, we will pick up our mat, and we will be good to go. Well, I was fairly happy with my first choice. I thought it was a nice mat, it had the thickness I wanted, um, it, it had the colors, I was okay with it. But then, mm, I caught with, of the, yes, all right. I caught a whiff of the price tag, $78 for that mat. Let's take a look at choice number two. Well, the other mat was $78, so we're not going with it. We're going with this one, which is equally thick, and it has a dark bevel. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I think it's going to work okay. So, this is where we're at, and this is $23 and change, which is a lot more acceptable than $78. And we may be able to get this done today um, while we wait, which would be terrific. So, as you can see, we went with the more affordable choice. It was uh, about a third of the original mat, and she was going to cut it while we wandered around the store. Hard to beat that. So, the next thing I did was took you off to take a look at some ready-made picture frames. And some of these were just wonderful. Unfortunately, I didn't have my camera. I have my cell phone with me. So it was very hard to get a really uh, scaled picture of some of those frames. But we're talking 20 by 30 inch frames. For like thirty dollars so let's take a look at that 
Okay, we are wandering around Michael's waiting for our mat to be cut. Now here's something I wanted to show you because I just saw this. Uh, our price is uh, $31.97 $31 and over here $31.97. And look at the size of these frames. Uh, if I wanted a contemporary frame, I'm going to back up so you see more of what it looks like. If I wanted a contemporary frame, if that was the sort of thing I could use, boy, this is where I would come for it. However, let's go over here. I wanted a more traditional frame, so this is the one that I got. And it's just a plain wood, as you know, and um, we painted it. We got the silver color that we wanted. Very, very easy, all pre-cut. Now they have mats here, but of course the mats are not something that we can use. Uh, they're cut a little differently. And getting the mat, I think at this point, was a lot more critical to the overall look of our finished painting. As you can see, if you want picture frames, boy, that is the way to go, because you can get huge frames as long as you like the contemporary styles that Michaels really specializes in. You can get some great frames. And a lot of people mentioned the last time we went frame shopping, gee, you should go to places and take a look at ready framed art and just throw the art away. Oh, believe me, I do that all the time. Really, I do. So, while we are in Michael's, one of the things I tend to buy a lot of at Michael's is boxes because, as you know, it's not hoarding if you keep it in a pretty box. So let's take a look at some boxes just for the fun of it. While we are at Michael's, let's just take a look at this. This is non-hoarder Wonderland. Look at all those pretty boxes. And we have more boxes elsewhere, which we are going to go take a look at now. And, of course, when you first walk in the store, wall-to-wall -wall boxes on the shelves. Let's take a look at some of those. I saw this when I first came in. Look at this. Nothing but wall-to-wall -wall pretty boxes. So, this is where to go if you don't want to be a hoarder. And then the last thing I did while we were killing time was I went over to take a look at their little unfinished birdhouses. So we'll take a look and then I'll tell you why I did that. Let's look. So while I am here killing time, waiting for my mat, I found this birdhouse. Now notice we've got a spire here, but we don't have a little cross on the top. So I'm wondering if that were painted red, that might make a good schoolhouse. Hmm, maybe a project for another time. All right, the reason why I wanted to take a look at unfinished birdhouses is because of the landscaping project. The landscaping project is going to leave me with a whole bunch of mulched areas with nothing in them but mulch. Because when we go to work on the landscaping, and this is tomorrow's video, but because I did that in conjunction with the mat shopping, we've kind of got a heads up on tomorrow's video today. One of the things that occurred to me is you don't have to put plants in your mulch. Just because you've got mulch doesn't mean you have to have a plant in it. And I thought, you know, maybe I'm just going to get a couple of little unfinished birdhouses. We'll get some acrylic paints, we'll paint them up, and we'll stick them out on shepherd's hooks or little what? who knows. 
stakes, whatever. We're going to look at this because it's going to be a project and we can use little brightly painted birdhouses in the mulched areas in lieu of flowers until we decide what kind of flowers we want if in fact we want flowers at all because I have a feeling that brightly colored birdhouses are less maintenance than flowers and if that's the case hey guess what I've got a plan for that landscaping woohoo all right the last thing we do at Michael's is we are going to go over and pick up our finished mat so here we go all right here is the finished mat let me make sure i can get it all in there we go all in the camera view as you can see we have a nice thick bevel and that's going to keep our artwork away from the glass and as I said that is critical that's one of the reasons that we are using a mat um, and in fact even if we didn't like the look of the piece with a mat we would use a mat to keep it off the glass all the same all right so now that we've got our mat we got it home we got to put it together so I went out and got a tripod for the Nikon camera took it out to the schoolhouse and did the matting work out there now the light is not great and I'm still kind of getting the feel of the tripod I am much more comfortable using the Logitech camera that I have that goes through my laptop because it's got a huge screen I can make sure everything is focused it's a lot easier for me to use because it's bigger and because to be perfectly candid and I don't like saying this but you know it's out there you know no big deal because I can't see the broad side of a barn I really need things to be the broad side of a barn I need a big picture to sort of you know focus well, whatever I can focus in on and the uh, the Logitech gives me that because it gives me a viewfinder that is a laptop screen. The Nikon, ooh, it's like this big. But for the most part, it worked. All right. So I know there are some of you who are going to say, boy, you didn't get that whole tripod blah, 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 down right. And you would be correct. I'm still learning how to use that thing. But here you go, and here is the actual insertion of the painting into the mat. Now, we're going to go take a look at how I did it, and then I'm going to explain some things when we get back. All right, we are out in the schoolhouse with our picture, which I am going to slide out of oh I didn't mean to do it that way here's our picture we've got our backing board we've got our frame and in here we have our mat so we're just going to open this up and we're going to take out the mat. Now, before you get nervous about the mat, this is the back side. This is the front side. So we are going to set our mat into the frame. Now remember, when we finish this, all we're doing right now is setting our picture in place. When we actually put this together, the final time before it goes up on a wall, there's going to be a piece of glass in there first. 
what we are doing now is we are test fitting our picture to our mat. There we go. Now, what I want to use for this is a very low tack adhesive. So, here we go. Post-its. Now, post-its are perfect for this. They are low tack adhesive, quick release. All you have to do is just pop a post-it. And when I take this off here, this is the adhesive end. That is the end I am placing on the corners. And that should be good enough to hold. So let's see, shall we? Here we go. And that is what our piece is going to look like, matted. Now, here. Let's just drop this in. I'm just going to set the backing board on just to hold everything in place. There we go. Now, you may have noticed that my mat came in nice big pieces of cardboard. I could have used either one of these as a backer board. I didn't need to go out and get something special. But in fact, I did go out and get something special simply because it was so inexpensive and it is a better quality board. I will, however, save these pieces. And the reason I will is I might want to put something on top of this. I might want to bring it out a little closer to the level of the back of the frame. As you can see, when I push this down, glass is going to take up some space, but actually glass is probably not going to take up much space of this. I may want to put something in there, and in that case, I have the cardboard. In the meantime, I'm going to set this on the table because our next adventure is to go buy glass and that cardboard is going to protect the painting sitting on the table. All right, first thing is, I know you did not see the final picture of what our painting looked like in the frame, but I've got a picture coming up for you, so don't worry about that. Meantime, um, I know the sound on that was not good because the Nikon has terrible sound, good picture quality, but terrible sound. So what I was doing was test fitting the painting into the mat. I wanted to make sure it lined up properly, that I liked them together, because once I put this all together with the glass, it's pretty much at that point, it's done and there's no turning back. It's going to be a, a, quite a mess if I have to take it all apart after it is completely secured in the frame. That is going to be our next step. So this was our test run. Pick it up, take a look at it, because this is what it will look like. So here's that picture I promised you. Now, that's what it will look like. There will be a piece of no-glare glass in, in uh, the frame. Um, I'm going with no-glare glass. That's, boy, that's six of one, half dozen of the other. It's a really nice glass if you're going to keep uh, a painting um, somewhere that light will bounce off it because you really won't be able to see very much from regular glass if it's reflecting light back at you. It's a very unpleasant looking. The downside is no glare glass 
sort of has a dull, fuzzy look to it. I've decided this is the choice I'm going to make because mostly, this is the like the mostly part of this, because I want you all to see this, and it's a kind of glass that, in general, we don't have a lot of exposure to in our daily lives. And I want you to be able to take a look at this because it is an option. It is not necessarily a perfect option, but it's the one I'm choosing because I would rather have this piece under no glare glass than regular glass, regardless of the downsides of the no glare glass. I think it's going to be better than the downsides of regular glass that will bounce artificial light back at us. So that was the reason for that choice. Now, the post-its. That was a trick I learned from a framer some time ago. In order to secure a picture, you don't want to use a high-tack adhesive while you may still be moving it around. Because, you know, if you put tape on it and you start peeling tape up, you're tearing up bits of paper from the back of your mat, etc., etc. But a post-it, which is designed to be put on and taken off again works really, really well for this. That is a trick I wanted to share with you. So, I think we are right on track, right where we need to be with the framing of this painting. Very excited about it. Next step on this is going to be installing the glass and then, um, I believe you will probably recall, I showed you the little glazier's points. Those are little, um, they are little mm, points, little bits of metal that you use to secure window glass into the frame. And you use that also to secure uh, artwork into a frame. Very easy, but we're going to use those. Uh, and again, it's something you don't run across in your everyday life, and that's one of the reasons that we're going to use these, because I want you to have a chance to see some of the different options. All right, tomorrow we are going out to uh, wander around the yard in its horrific condition. And by the way, its horrific condition is only going to last another couple of days. The landscapers will be coming in this week, so we're going to get some final pictures of what it's like out there. I have already given them a check for $1,800, ouch, ouch. However, it's a bargain for what I'm getting for my money. That, by the way, is half of it. The, uh, the work that is being done now is going to be a little over $3,600, and like I say, it's a bargain. That is a really good price for what I'm getting. Although I do have to say, you know, ouch, ouch, $1,800 check. Tomorrow, we're going to go out and I'm going to show you the work that will be done over the next couple of days. And that is going to be uh, removing some plants that will be in the way. They have to be taken out because a grading machine, like something big that you drive, is going to come into the yard and start pulling things up and also apparently dumping soil. Good news about this. The landscaper is thrilled with the idea of being videoed. He actually wants to be videoed. Fantastic. Um, and I promised him clips for his own website. So this is going to be great because we've got somebody who really wants to share the process with us with me as the videographer and with you as the viewers. So what could be more fantastic than that? All right. Have a fantastic day. I will see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, road trip, but it's only out to the backyard. But still, it should be fun. See you then.